Kia ora, welcome back, I'm the Kiwi Coder, and in this video I just want to explain some differences uh, between IK and FK when it comes to animating an arm during a walk cycle, um, and why I've chosen to go with FK rather than IK. Um, so this is an IK setup here which I'll cover in the video as well, uh, where you can basically grab this bone, move it around, and you can also rotate this bone to uh, rotate the hand. Um, but if I disable the IK constraint then um, I can basically rotate these bones and just act as though it was a normal FK setup. And all of these bones here, they actually exist on a separate layer to the, um, the deformation bones of the character. So these are uh, these deformation bones, they're the ones that actually skin the character and the, the transform, uh, the copy transform constraint basically copies the position and rotation of these bones to the underlying skeleton. Cool, yep, so uh, let's get into it. So this video follows on from a previous video I've made, uh, rigging a spine in Blender 2.9 using child of constraints. So we've got a uh, just sort of basic uh, like arm setup for the for the character where I can um, yeah it's like a simple FK setup where I can uh, just rotate the bones of uh, each individual bone of the arm. Uh, to animate the the arm and this is actually the solution I'm going to go with uh, when it comes to animating a walk cycle just for the arms uh, in particular um, because yeah I did try animating using an IK setup for the arms um, but I didn't find that particularly useful because um, it gave some pretty weird sort of motions which um, I'm just going to sort of go into um, so to kind of illustrate that I'm just going to show you how to set up uh, if an IK solution for the arm uh, to begin with so if you extrude a bone out from the base of the wrist um, and another one for the pole target um, for the constraint uh, from the elbow and then just clear the parent on both of these now I can just uh, move this bone back um, somewhere like here <coughs> and just to kind of keep it out of the way when we're animating um, and now go back to pose mode and select the IK bone and shift select the uh, forearm bone now hit shift I to add an IK constraint to this bone here and yeah this is all pretty sort of similar process to, um, to the way the feet and legs were set up uh, again you can see the whole sort of body is um, animating or sort of following this IK so we just need to limit that to two bones and now it will just be the arm which is cool and um, yeah there's still the, the pole target to set up which is this, uh, this bone back here which I called shoulder underscore L001 so if I just um, actually I'll just copy the name of that bone and then paste it into the constraint here um, first I need to select the armature, cool, um, and so the pole target is set up except the thumb just flips around the other way, so I just need to uh, invert that by setting the pole angle to 180. Cool, so yeah, now we've got um, just some basic IK set up for the, for the arm. Um, there's one more thing that you can do uh, to kind of make life a little bit easier, and that is parenting the hand to this, uh, this IK bone. Um, so when I rotate this bone, the hand rotates with it. So I'm just going to add a child of constraint. Uh, and now when I rotate this bone here, the, um, the hand sort of rotates with it. So I can control both the kind of position of the arm and the rotation of the hand from this bone, which is uh, pretty handy. Handy, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, cool. So now if I move this arm down and actually create the first pose of our walking animation, um, I can kind of show you what I was trying to get at <laughs> earlier. So if I just turn keyframing, automatic keyframing on and move this arm out somewhere like this, uh, something like that. And now if I just create another keyframe um, for the second pose of the arm, somewhere like here, you would kind of expect that this um, this motion here, the arm would be blending in a circular sort of way between these two points, but because um, the only thing that is keyframed is the elbow's location, um, if I just turn motion paths on, uh, it might make it a little bit more obvious. Yeah, you can see that um, the, the path that the arm is taking is it's basically like this uh, this exact sort of straight line which is not really how um, arms actually swing they normally swing in like arcs so I 
yeah, this is basically why I'm not going to use IK for um, for the arms when it comes to creating like a walk cycle, just because the, the motions it gave were quite weird. And I'd have to kind of create like a whole bunch of intermediate keyframes here to sort of create like a, a circular thing. But yeah, I think it's, um, you can just get this sort of motion for free if you just animate these bones directly. So um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm basically just going to remove all of these keyframes, um, turn off automatic keyframing again and I'll clear the motion paths. Now if I just basically put everything back to the way it was, I'm just going to go and now delete everything that I just set up, um, which yeah may seem crazy but uh, yeah uh, basically I, I, I'm not going to use IK for the arms at the moment. Um, but what I am going to do is uh, currently all of the bones for my character I've got on these separate bone layers out here. Um, Oh, it looks like it's mirrored some of the stuff across. I need to clean that up. But basically all of these bones here, um, they're going to be the bones that the character is skinned with and I keep them on the right hand side. And all the bones that I animate with are on the left hand side. So you can see I've got the the feet on uh, on these two layers here. I've got the uh, all the spine stuff on this layer here. And I'm just going to put the arms on these two, um, these two layers here. So rather than moving these bones across to here, because I still want the deformation part, the skinning sort of bones on this side, but the animated bones are going to be here. So what I'm going to do is basically duplicate these three bones and create a copy transform constraint and then put those bones over across this side. Um, so if you just go to edit mode, hit uh, shift D to duplicate and right click to uh, get out of the grab mode. Now, um, if we go back to pose mode, uh, it's kind of, you've got these two bones, but see now the, sh the underlying shoulder bone is selected. That's the deformation one. And this is the one I'm going to animate with, the 001. And it's basically a created a duplicate. And you can select the under bone just by clicking the, um, the same bone again. So I'm going to create a copy transform constraint from the, the top level bone, which is the one I'll animate with. And now if I hold down shift and click again, um, now I can select the, the bone underneath and hit control shift C and create a copy transform constraint. And you can see this faint sort of green in the background. That's the, uh, the bone underneath um, that's got the, the copy transform constraint. Um, so I'm just going to do that for all of these bones here. And yeah, so the last thing to do is now just move the top level bones. So if you just shift select each one of them once, I can now change the bone layers uh, over to the other side. Cool. So now I have these three bones on my um, the side that I want to animate on. And actually, yeah, underneath the hood, it's actually um, it's mimicking the, the transform of the, the underlying skeleton or the underlying skeleton basically mimics the uh, the transforms for these animated bones here um, which yeah I just find for organizational purposes it's it's quite nice to kind of separate the animation stuff from the, um, the actual skinning stuff um, but that's definitely personal preference cool um, and the last thing I can now show you is uh, so if I try to recreate that um, that pose that we had before um, using IK, if I sort of recreate a very similar kind of setup where, say this is like the first keyframe here. Um, so I'll just, sorry, move all these things again here. Um, and now if I just go to like 10, and just sort of move the arm down a little bit, kind of what I was trying to do before. Um, and if I calculate, say, the motion path for the, the hand, which will be um, basically the same point that we were using before, you can actually see that it's not a um, it's not a straight line anymore. It's actually created this arc, and it is quite a subtle thing, but these subtleties I think matter a lot when it comes to animation so um, yeah I, I'm much happier about these sort of arcs that it creates rather than the the way the IK uh, system was creating these direct straight lines um, for the bones between yeah different uh, different parts of the, the uh, animation 
Cool, yeah, so I think that is basically it for this. Um, if you do have any kind of suggestions about how you manage to animate arms, like in a walk cycle, I'd love to hear them. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically it. So thanks for watching. And um, yeah, if you wanna see more videos like this, then uh, please hit subscribe, um, hit the bell notification icon so you get notifications as soon as my videos come out. Um, and yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, uh, give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends, all of that jazz. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. So yeah, stay tuned. Uh, ka kite.